morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Please stand and join us as we start our worship. Sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy, my old God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail incarnate. Pleased as men with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light in light to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Discovery Church. Merry Christmas. We have been working our way toward this day for all of Advent. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and we celebrate love. Today's theme is love. All of the readings will be about love, and um, we are so excited that you're here to celebrate God's love with us at Discovery Church. We do just have a couple of quick announcements. We will be holding a service this evening at 6.30 for Christmas Eve, so please come back and join us then and, um, and bring your friends and neighbors. Um, also, on Friday the 29th will be our um, movie on the lawn in the building, <laughs> and um, popcorn and hot chocolate will be provided. All are welcome. Um, come by yourself, come with friends, bring your kids, whatever you'd like to do. We're looking forward to seeing you there for Lion King, um, just a good family event. Are there any other announcements? All right. Well, let's pass the peace of Christ.
Yes, I gave As you up. make your way back to your seats, please remain standing as we continue our worship and song. A little bit different, joy to the world. It's Wendy's favorite. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yeah. 
clouds and bring us light. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to be of Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to be of You can be seated for this song. If you know it, sing it. If you don't, then just listen. Um, it reminds us that even though Christmas is a wonderful, beautiful event, the birth of the Son of God, Christ Jesus, um, but it's not all about his birth. What's really most important is his death and how he died to save us from our sins, to allow us a way to go back home to God. for the lighting of the Advent candle, if the Blankenship family would come forward. (coughs) 
In this final week of Advent, our attention is on love. The following scripture verses may sound very familiar, so we will hear them twice. The first time is in the New Revised Standard Version. The second time, you'll be reading from the message. Listen for the call to love in these words. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40 says, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Teacher, which command in God's law is the most important? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list, but there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. Let us pray. God, we have learned to love from being loved by you. And so today, let us enact that love. Let us live that love. We know what the world needs now is more love. We need to remember how much you love each one of us, and we must share that love with others. Amen. It's time now for the prayers of the people, and we like to begin that time with praises to God for all the things that we've seen him at work doing this week in us and through us and for us and around us. Would anyone like to start us off with a praise? Yes. Amen. Lynn is praising God for all the things that he has done and is doing and will do. And, um, and we are too. I saw another hand. Uh-huh. Yay! <laughs> Praise God. Maddie is home. That's awesome. Who else had a hand up? Yes, sir. My goodness. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Who else has a praise? All right, let's turn to prayer. Who needs prayer this week? Uh-huh. 
Amen. We will definitely pray for Charlie and for the band and for the parents because we've been there. <laughs> um, that's a great trip. That's exciting. So um, travel mercies and protection for Charlie and for all of his friends. Who else? Uh-huh. Amen. We will lift up all of our military who have to be away from home. Who else has a prayer request? Uh huh. Yeah, Royal and I were talking about the fact that all around us are people who are struggling through the holidays. Um, we may not necessarily know it, but it's a really difficult time for a lot of people. So we'll, we'll continue to lift them up and remember them. Are there others? Yes, ma'am. Amen. So Lynn is praising God for her church family and um, praying that everyone will be healthy and just praising God and thanking him. Amen. Are there others? Uh-huh. I have a phrase Yeah. I know, right? You can raise a hand and I find you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. It is a miracle. It is an absolute miracle. You don't know how bad it is until it gets fixed, and then you're like, wow, I was so blind. Colors are different. It's, all, it's amazing. I can stand in my usual spot over there and read the words to all the hymns, so I'm singing loud, so they may not have known how loud I could sing because I couldn't see the words before. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate that and all your prayers as well. Um, are there any other prayer requests? Any other praises? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning so happy, Lord, that today is Christmas Eve. So happy to be celebrating your love, your love for us when we don't deserve it, Lord. Lord, we're so happy to be together with the people we care about in your house, celebrating your love. Father God, we have so many things to praise you for, but just a few of them. Lynn is praising you for everything that you have done for her and are doing for her and will do for her. She's amazed at you, Lord, and we are too. Thank you for everything that you've done for her. And please continue that beautiful work of healing her body so that she can come back and be with us. Father, we are just praising you and thanking you that Maddie's home. We're praising you and thanking you that all of our children are home. Um, and we're praising you and thanking you for getting them safely here. We pray, Lord, that when it's time to go back to school or work or wherever they're headed, that you'll continue to protect them. And we thank you, Father, for the blessing that our families are. Lord Royal is praising you this morning because already you've given him an opportunity to use some of the gift that Discovery was able to give so that he could build a ramp for someone in great need and a big ramp at that, Lord. Thank you for people willing to go out of their way for others, Father. Thank you for people generous, willing to give so that Others can be provided for the way that you provide for us, and we thank you. Lord, we just praise you for this day, for this opportunity to worship together, and for the wild rumpus that's about to start in just a few minutes. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for um, a meaningful, impromptu pageant. 
Father, we want to lift up Charlie and the Corinth Holders High School Band as they travel to London. We pray, Lord, that your protection will cover them, that your wings will cover them. Lord, we pray that everybody who goes will come back just as healthy and well as they left. We pray for the chaperones, Lord. Give them eyes in the back of their head. Help them to sleep at night when there's an opportunity to do so. Keep everybody healthy, Lord, and we thank you for the opportunity to play music together. Father, for all of our military families, husbands, wives, children, parents who have to be away from home, thank you for that sacrifice. Thank you for people who are willing to defend our country wherever they may be called. Please keep them safe, Lord, and please give us peace. Father, for everyone who couldn't be with us, we lift them up. And Father, for those who are with us, we lift them up too. You know the needs, Lord. You know what everyone here is feeling. And we thank you, Father, that you're already ministering to all of those needs. Help us be your hands and feet. Lord, Lynn is just praising you for her church family and for her health and just thanking you, God, for everything that you're doing. We're amazed, Lord, and we thank you for your love, for your protection, for your provision. Help us to love the way you do, Lord, big and loud and crazy. Father, when Jesus was here and his disciples asked him how they should pray, this is the prayer that he shared with them, and we say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, <clears throat> the moment we have all been waiting for, um, I'm going to actually read the scripture after the impromptu pageant. So, James, could you give Molly a heads up that we're, we're ready? So the impromptu pageant, for those of you who've never seen it before, is literally that. Um, we don't do any rehearsals. There are no lines. The children are going to mime the Christmas story. They're all dressed up and ready to go. Are we ready? All right. Here we go. Now the birth of Jesus of Nazareth took place in this way. In the sixth month... The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a virgin in Galilee called Nazareth to a, vir to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary replied with the words of greatest faith, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then Joseph came to Mary. Joseph brought back the news to Mary that Caesar declared that everyone in the empire should be taxed and every person must be counted. Each man was ordered to go to his hometown the town of his ancestors. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, south to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, 
because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. The upper room was full, so they stayed by the animals. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth. Joseph cleared out the cattle's eating trough, and Mary laid the newborn baby in the manger. In the region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child was and his mother Mary, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the story of the birth of Jesus in a town called Bethlehem. Amen. Good job, everybody. Good job. Good job. All right, let's have a prayer, and then you guys can go to your... Kind of gather around. You did an excellent job. That was fun. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for leaving heaven and coming to earth to be one of us. Thank you for being like us and knowing what it's like to be human. Thank you, Jesus, for being a mighty Savior, for dying on the cross for us to save us from our sins. You're the only one who could. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And it's in your precious and holy name that we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Good job, Molly. Thank you. I don't know which is more fun, getting ready to do it or actually doing it. That, that was just crazy fun. Watching them choose their costumes and get dressed was a lot of fun. Today's scripture comes from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 
through 17. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last, our troubles will be over, and you will never again fear disaster. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion, don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful song. It's the word of the Lord. Amen. Zephaniah um, is called a minor prophet. And he's not called that because this book is less significant than other prophetic books. He's called that because it's short. <laughs> so there's a group of minor prophets and major prophets. The major ones are long, like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Zephaniah is fairly short. And he is writing in the time of King Josiah. Um, about 600 years before Jesus was born. So this prophecy is made well in advance of Jesus' birth here on earth. It's interesting to me to look at this particular scripture in light of what we know, um, because Jesus has come. Pretty accurate and interesting so because today is the fourth Sunday of Advent and our theme is love, um, we're going to focus on God's love as we see it in this piece of scripture from Zephaniah. Um, it's, it's an interesting question to ponder. How would you answer this question for yourself? How does God feel about you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? How does he feel about you? And usually, we know how people feel about us. We can see it on their face when we walk in a room. Um, I have been annoying James lately because now that I can see, I stare at him all the time. I'm like staring at his face. and He's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> you can tell how somebody feels about you uh, by what you see, by what you hear. So how does God feel about you? And how do you know how he feels about you? And do you have any influence on that at all? Those are the questions for this morning. So this book of, of Zephaniah, the prophet himself, was talking about a time when God would remove his hand of judgment from his people. You know, the story of God and his people is a difficult one at best. He loves them close, they push him away. He loves them close, they push him away. Um, he draws near to them, they walk away. But he always pursues them, always. And that's exactly what's going on in Zephaniah. Zephaniah is preaching and prophesying to people who have walked away again, and let go of God's hand and gone on ahead. And he's trying to bring them back into their relationship with God um, before it's too late. And so the first three chapters, basically, of Zephaniah are all about judgment. What's going to happen if we don't get this taken care of? And then it turns. And Zephaniah begins to prophesy about what's going to happen when they do return to God because God knows that they're coming back. So when it turns, we hear that God will lift his hand of judgment and will disperse the enemies of the people. Now think about that. Who are our enemies? Well, for one, the evil one. And this makes it plain that God will dispense with him. That's what God's going to do for his people at the time that we're rejoicing about today. 
So that's one thing. We are looking at an opportunity that God is going to take to be the king who lives with us. Now remember, it hasn't happened yet when Zephaniah is writing. He's prophesying about a time when God will literally take on flesh and live among us. You can study the religions of the world. You will not find anyone who takes on flesh and comes to live as a human and dies for his people. And that's exactly what God's saying that he's going to do. He's going to take on flesh and tabernacle with us. God with us. Emmanuel. God with us. Now, we talk about heaven all the time. But what about sort of the reverse of that, where Jesus left the throne, took on flesh, became human, and lived here as one of us? The king of heaven came here to just be a regular human who got hurt, who got sick, who people were mean to. That's love. That's real love. Because one thing that we know about God's love is it's sacrificial. God's love is sacrificial, and that's how he calls us to love as well. So then we go on in verse 15. At last, your troubles will be over, and you will never again fear disaster. Now, God's people have encountered some disasters. Amen. It's been disaster after disaster. God keeps us humble, right? But he says you'll never have to fear again. The only thing that could make that possible is the birth of Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection to glory. That's why we don't have to fear, because he already conquered death. He's victorious. He's given us that victory, and all we have to do is put our foot down on it and walk on that promise. He's already conquered death. Moving into verse 16, he says, On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up and don't be afraid. When God really wants to emphasize something, he says it more than once. He says, You won't have any more fear and don't be afraid. You know, the Bible tells us that perfect love, God's love, casts out fear. It's the only thing that does. If you feel fear in your heart, the only remedy for that is God's love. If you know people around you who live afraid, they need Jesus. That's the only way to live victorious and not in fear is with Jesus. And God so graciously gave him to us. He let his son come here and be one of us. Because he loves us. When we call you beloved, you are. You are. Look at verse 17. This is the absolute best part. <clears throat> For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He's not going to save you a little bit. He's a mighty Savior. He's not going to save you from a tiny little problem. He's going to save you from disaster that leads to death. A mighty Savior is he. Mighty. He says, he will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. There's that word again. He will calm all your fears. You need not be afraid. When the angel comes to Mary... Don't be afraid. This is going to sound crazy, but don't be afraid. God's got you. So many things that God calls us to do are scary. Because he calls us to do stuff we can't do by ourselves. He calls us to do things we can only do in his power. And when he does that, we have to remember how often he says, don't be afraid. And what he's really saying when he says, don't be afraid is, I love you. I love you. I love you so much, I sent my son to die for you. 
And then we get to, he will rejoice over you with joyful songs. This is the God who sings over you. Did you know God is singing over you? Have you ever thought about that? God is singing over you. You ever had anybody sing over you? It's interesting. So we sing to our babies all the time, right? When Molly and Emmy, Emily were little, I sort of made up little songs, a different one for each one. And um, I would sing them their little song before they went to bed. I sang it when they got up in the morning. Um, it always calmed them down, how, whatever state they were in. And I continued to sing the song as they got older. And I will tell it like it is. When Molly went off to Appalachian State, I sang her her song. And you could see the muscle memory clicking in as I sang it. She was calming down because we were about to leave each other the first time. That was hard. But I sang them their songs. I sang because I loved them. I sang because I wanted them to know how much I loved them. I sang because I was just filled up with joy every time I looked at them. And that's why God sings over you. I'll sing Emily's song since she's in the room. <clears throat> I didn't know you were going to get treated to a solo this morning. It went like this. Emily, tiny Emily, sweet Emily, she's mommy's girl. And she still is. And I would sing that song. You could just watch her whole body God is singing over you right now. Right now. He is so happy to see you. So happy to be part of your life. So happy to have a chance to love on you. That he's singing. This is like loud songs. Beautiful, happy songs over you. Because he loves you. For God so loved the world. That he gave us his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's love. That's love. Jesus Loves Me is one of my favorite hymns. I didn't know till I was an adult that it had verses. And they are amazing. You should, you should read the whole hymn sometime. But God sings over you out of love. He sings loud with gladness because he loves you. He right now is rejoicing in his relationship with you. So won't you join him in singing? Won't you sing a new song to your Savior? A song about love? He loves you and he sings love songs to you all day long. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for rejoicing over us. Lord, sometimes we don't give you much reason, but you love us, and so you sing. Help us to sing over others that way. Help us to share the joy that we find in you with others. Help us love others the way you love us, with no restrictions. Help us, Lord, to love with commitment. Help us remember, Lord, that love is a verb. It's not just a feeling. It's action. Help us love the way that you do, by doing. Help us remember, Lord, that your love is boundless. There's no end to it. Help us remember, Lord, that Jesus came to us on your love. And we thank you, Father, for today, for this Christmas Eve. We pray for the service to come, and we thank you, Lord, for all the beauty that is Christmas. It's in your love that we pray, and all God's people say, amen. Would the ushers come forward to receive the offering?
Let's bless the offering. <clears throat> Father God, thank you for all the many gifts that you've given us, especially Jesus. Lord, please bless the givers and the gift and multiply it to the growing of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God, our Heavenly Father, this blessed angel came And into certain shepherds brought tidings of the same Now that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to that perfect light. Born a king of Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Would you say our benediction with us? Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's people say, amen. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, worship in God most high. Oh, oh, oh star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, 
played along too.